yeah, pretty nice walk in, huh? Uh, nice little creek that runs right down through the middle of this property too. And it, uh, it is one of the coolest public lands I think that I have found. I mean, check out this view. Feels like I'm in a national park, but I'm not. Um, all right. Well, I'm going to fill you guys in a little bit on how the mushroom season's gone this so far this year. Um, a giant thumbs down. It's been super, super dry. We got one rain shower. We got like an inch or more rain a couple weeks ago and a few little spotty hit and miss showers. But that's about all the moisture we've got. It is just a major drought right now. Which for me is uh, super disappointing. Because if there's one thing I love, it is morale hunting. Um, best part about it is I'm at the kind of the end of my eight and a half, nine month long season. Started in September with elk in Colorado. Came back, getting bow hunting stuff ready, duck hunting, um, all the way through the gun season for deer, and close of the duck season. And it wasn't a week later, we were off to the races ice fishing. And I spent a lot of time on the ice this year. And then that rolled right into shed hunting. And Turkey hunting was right after that, which is still ongoing right now, but we're on the last couple week slide of my relentless pursuit of everything and anything that walks or grows pretty much. <laughs> so yeah, I'm uh, also getting fairly tired and you know, it's hard to get up at three in the morning and go hunt these turkeys every day. It's freaking just exhausting, so. Another great thing about mushroom hunting, you can sleep in if you want. Um, there's no good time or bad time of the day to go look for them. If they're out, they're out. Um, and they can't smell or see, so you can't scare them away. Uh, we got about, I don't know, six to eight pounds that I've found this year so far. And normally I'm up around the... Uh, Oh, anywhere from 50 to 75 pounds a year. So last year was a really, really bad year also. And this year actually may even be worse. But I'm not going to let that stop me from stomping around and trying to find some morels. They're out there. I mean, there's it's not like there's no morels, but they're very, very spotty here and there. And you got to check hundreds of trees um, before you find one. So... That being said, I checked this, like I was saying, I really want to get up on those north sides and there's some huge, huge elms way up high. And I think that's going to be the key if I'm going to find any at all. So nice little creek here. We have about a two mile walk. Um, what I like to do is get to the very back of the property first and then I will work my way back to the truck. So I have probably about a half hour walk just to uh, tell you guys some tips and tricks and what I do and what I don't do. Um, a lot of people I don't know. They, I, the first thing you need to know, mushroom hunting, is tree identification. And finding the elms in the southwest region of Wisconsin and southern Wisconsin as a whole is pretty huge. So there's tons of stuff online. You can go find tree identification, but the best way you're going to do it is go out there and look yourself. We'll figure it out. Like here we're coming up on an elm. I mean, this is a really extreme north side, but I'll give you guys a little look. Yep, 
and you can see it's dead all the way up and this bark is starting to peel off right here see it's like a different color it's almost a white color when you stand back it almost looks like it's mold on the tree but uh that's what you want to look for that's either going to be an up-and-comer or it's going to be really good right now when they're just first starting to get that dutch elms disease is uh really what you want to look for you know and i kind of categ categorize my trees as like really prime trees um too you know too far done way too dead all the barks off them and i got one coming up right here right now as a good example um there's one dead one right in front of us too but this is kind of what i'm talking about right here you can see that bark is just starting to peel off the top and most of the tree is already gone and there's still bark on the bottom yet. That I would say would be a pretty good tree yet for another probably a couple of years maybe, but definitely not at its most prima stage. Um, no mushrooms, but like I said, we're really extreme north side right here. Um, yeah, so just that's, you know, really what you want to look for. You'll find them under fruit trees, uh, some pine trees, some hickories, oaks. You'll find them all over, but the vast majority of the ones you're going to find in this area of the state are all going to be dead elms. You figure that out and you'll be well on your way of filling up a sack full of mushrooms. All right, we have hiked all the way back now and it's time to make the climb to the top. And if you know the area at all, um, Vernon County, Crawford County, you know these hills are no joke that's for sure they are straight up and straight down but i want to show you guys these oh they smell like morels too but uh this is what i use to put my mushrooms in um i was never that big a fan of mesh bags until i started kind of reading into it a little bit about possibly as you're carrying those morels through an area that they can be, the spores can be falling off and, you know, maybe, maybe have some mushrooms next year. Um, I don't know if I buy into that hundred percent, but I was always a, just a plastic bag guy. And now I've went to these mesh bags and I actually really like them. I thought that maybe they would crush the mushrooms a little bit, but these bags, are really 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 strong and I, I I'm a huge fan now I'll only hunt with these mesh bags so another little tip for you guys if you're wondering why people do garbage bags or mesh bags that's the theory behind the mesh bags that you spread the spore out through the woods as you're walking and the winds blowing and um, helps to regenerate the mushrooms like I said I don't know if that's 100% true or not but um, What's it gonna hurt? If it does help, um, the more the merrier. I mean, I've read things about, people say you can sterilize certain areas of the woods if you aren't spreading the spores around and picking all the mushrooms. So yeah, just uh, it's a lot of stuff to dive into and think about when you're just out mushroom hunting, but we're gonna get ourselves up this hill and see if we can find some. So tip number whatever it is now, but uh, I mean, I'm no means an expert at this, but I spent the better part of 35 years 
looking for these things like mad and one thing I like to do is wear gaiters. Uh, if you saw that close up of my feet, that, uh, whew, I gotta catch my breath right at the top. Um, yeah, I get sick of all the crap falling down into my boots and shoes if I wear, especially if I wear rubber boots or something. Thorns, and it's like every two, three hundred yards you're stopping, shaking your boots out, and you can never get that freaking thorn out of there, so. What I like to do is uh, put these gaiters on. And that keeps uh, a lot of the debris and stuff falling down in there. That's giving me troubles all the time, so. So we're hiking along and I'm just working my way across this top and Came across this guy right here. So, if you see these, you actually can eat them. Uh, people call them beefsteaks or false morale is their real name. And the way you can tell that it's not a morale, I mean, it kind of looks like one, but not really. Um, let me get it broke off get you a look you know at that stem is not hollow all the way up through the mushroom so that's how you can tell that it's a false morel and they're very very toxic to eat raw um, people do cook them and eat them but they have to be cooked really thoroughly so I'm just gonna stay away from that noise but um, yeah just another thing to look out for and I generally when I'm finding false morels, I'm usually in an area where I'm gonna find actual morels too. They seem to kind of grow together a little bit. So oh, there's a big old elm tree over here. I'm gonna go check that guy out. You can see that bark is just like turned whitish, almost looking orangish. And that's the very early stages of Dutch Elms disease and kills the tree so that I can find my favorite thing in the whole world, morel mushrooms. It's pretty cool. Well, we've been walking for quite a bit this morning and I finally stumbled upon a nice patch. Um, this place is just covered in them. It's all down through here. Two humongous trees. Dead morels. Or, I'm sorry, dead elms. But, uh, I think I'm going to be picking here a while. Pretty awesome. They're everywhere in here. And this is north side. Which is kind of sad because that means that's about the end of our season here. But let's get to picking. Oh my God, they're every freaking where. Everywhere I look. Ouch. Oh. Damn, thorn. <laughs> oh, I love this so much. This is like every dream coming true to me. It's 
Some of these definitely frostbit a little bit, but they will still eat just fine. Ouch! Freaking buckthorn. Can <laughs> you believe it? So pumped. They're still everywhere. And this bag's about full. Oh my god. One thing that I do is I check almost every single, every single dead elm tree I find. And I just basically work my way through. And you can see in that video, I was looking up more than down. That is the number one tip that I can tell you to find morels is don't look down, look up. Look up and around till you find your next dead elm and mark that down in your mind and then walk straight towards it. Then you can look on the ground and start looking around. But you know, really, if you wanna be effective and cover the most ground and the most trees, you're gonna find the most mushrooms, so. That's a, a tip that I always tell people, don't, don't be looking down the whole time. Look up and find those trees and mark it and make your way to them. And sometimes you'll find a few scattered in between here and there on your way to it. So uh, most of the time I am looking up when I'm walking. Well, that was pretty amazing. Um, I'm guessing that there is, there was probably, I don't know, seven to eight pounds I picked under that tree. And a tree that I've never ever been to ever in my entire life. So, uh, super exciting. I'm gonna check this one last elm here before I make my way back up the hill. But yeah, super, super exciting. Man, those are the trees that I dream about. And to find one on, you know, this kind of year like we're having, pretty freaking sweet so we are just gonna I got all my mushrooms loaded up in my backpack and we're just gonna keep on hiking um, it just shows you don't you know I probably checked 50 to 80 trees already and just don't quit you just gotta keep going and eventually you're gonna find some uh, maybe it's just one or maybe it's eight pounds like I just picked, but that's really got me motivated and making my back feel a lot less sore to uh, continue this day on. We have a ton of ground to cover. I could never cover all this ground in a week straight of walking probably. So we're going to get back at it. That one there. Now oh, I saw one over here. Where'd you go, fella? Oh, there he is. He's tipped over. He's pretty dried up already. Well, there's another one right there. Yeah, these ones are really, really dry. A lot drier than the other ones, but a lot more sun beating down in here also. You know, a lot of people, um, cut mushrooms with knives they got these fancy mushroom knives and all that stuff you don't need any of that crap all you need to do is pinch them off at the base and if you pull them out everything that i've read tells me that it does not matter if you cut them off pull them out do whatever um so oh there's another half one right there looks like it's only going to be three or four for this tree but we will take it. Um, another thing I should tell you guys, another tip, of course, um, Onyx Maps. Oh, there's another one right there. 
Um, I use it a ton for everything that I do. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> Maybe I should start finding instead of talking to you guys, but um, yes, Onyx Maps. If you're places like this that are huge tracts of land and you only get to walk it once a year or twice a year um, until you really get it figured out, you know, having marks down where you found mushrooms the year before is a great tool and you can just keep expanding on that the more you find you just keep marking and you'll be able to figure out these areas and just come in here and hit those trees and not have to worry about thinking oh man where was that one that i found last year and you can walk right to it it's super accurate you can download the maps ahead of time and it has you know everything you need on it so another tip that i use a lot when i'm mushroom hunting and when i'm hunting in general anything i use onyx maps all the time so keep that in mind we're gonna get back on the trail here there is elms everywhere in this little valley oh we're working our way still up this valley um i think it's important to tell you guys too that i didn't say this before um so we're like midway through our mushroom season, if not farther, basically on the tail end of it. And they always start on the south hillsides. That's where you want to go first. Um, morels need 50 to 60 degrees ground temp to, uh, to grow. So we were way past that weeks ago. And basically I think that it was over before before it even got a chance to start on the south sides. I have south sides that I find piles of mushrooms on that I didn't find maybe a handful all early and no little gray ones. And then I, once, you know, once that south side's done, good thing to do is have a thermometer along with you. Just a regular old thermometer, just the stuff in the ground. That's really gonna give you a gauge on you know, if it's too warm or too cold or, you know, and then check out the moisture in the ground. It's got to have moisture. And like I said, it's been so dry here that I, they didn't even get a chance. So once that happens, then I start bouncing back to the west and east sides and north slopes are last. And that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm bouncing back and forth across this valley, just checking all the low trees in here until I get way up on top. And what do you know? Couple more for the pot. We, uh, the morning kind of got away from me. I just looked at my phone and it's 1.30. So, break time, Snickers, beef jerky. What else you need? And some water. Um, man, what a peaceful place up here. It is so quiet, besides me talking, that it's unbelievable.
All right, we're just just swinging around this hillside after uh, I last talked to you guys, and I see some more chilla. Oh, these are big beauties too. These summer are already way too dried up. Let's get to picking. I just kind of, I was thinking while well, I was sitting there having a little break and breather that uh, I'd kind of let you guys in on like how I go about hunting or mushroom hunting a property. Um, you know, and it really starts way before I even get to this place. Um, First thing is, you know, finding the mushroom reports, listening, you know, where they're doing the best. Uh, they're doing the best in La Crosse area, or they're doing the best in Door County, or Milwaukee area, or, you know, figure out where that spot is that's the best. And some years it's good all over, but on these years where it's uh, not so great, you might have to travel a little bit to find some, but, um, so yeah, I'll, I'll figure that out first. And then what I do after that is I go online. Um, the DNR website, um, I'm not sure if it's the Go Wild or whatever, the regular, just search DNR maps. And there is a list of about 50 different kind of maps on there, all public information that they used to hold private. And I think back when Scott Walker was um governor he made all that stuff had to be public information so they had to make a website and put all the forest croplands and you know all the all the different kind of public accesses and spaces that you know you can go out and hunt and recreate on available to everyone so before that you used to have to buy a book that was like 40 bucks every year and it was super crappy and like you had to reference with plat books and i mean i spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars every year just on maps alone i mean i have totes at home full of maps um so i mean you get the point anyways so i go online now we have google earth we have onyx maps we have them dnr maps and then you can all you know cross reference those with what you know what you kind of want to see in a woods that you're walking if it's mostly south side or north side or west or east and especially with google maps you can really really dive into almost kind of seeing what trees are you know what kind of forest it is and once i do that i go through all that and then find my way over here and you know i pick points of interest and mark them down and like on a property this big, I never like to cover the same area more than once in the same day. So I'm going out and making a big loop or like I was saying before, I'm gonna go out this ridge, I'm gonna come back on this ridge, but I wanna take two completely different routes on that ridge or that point. And then I'll go ahead and you know mark down nice trees that I find if I think it was more south side, it was gonna be early, you know, I'll put that down, oh, it's early mushroom spot. But um, that's kind of the gist of how I walk anything for shed hunting or mushroom hunting or whatever. I never ever try to take the same trail in and around, especially if, you know, you're foraging, so. Oh, nothing under that one. Yeah, well, what haven't I covered yet? 
thorns. Thorns are the worst. I don't think there's hardly any plants in the freaking woods that don't have thorns or stickers or something's gonna poke you or scratch you. I mean, So yeah, if you uh, you're gonna go do this mushroom thing, be prepared <laughs> to bleed. You're gonna get your pants half tore off you. It's just there's just no avoiding it. But I'm not complaining about this wood so much because I got some other ones that are basically hands and knees crawl through the whole entire thing but uh yeah thorns suck <laughs> got a nice little elm coming up right here but i i spend weeks upon weeks just sitting on my couch picking thorns out of my hands after <laughs> mushroom season's done and shed hunting and turkey hunting and then there's always the ticks i call it tick flicking season because there are ticks everywhere. I'll flick probably 20 of them off my pants on the way home out the window. They just, just something you gotta deal with. Snakes, I hate snakes. Um, definitely in rattlesnake country. And it's, it's warm enough today where one could be out sunning himself. I, I would think that they couldn't move too quick right now but it is about 75 degrees so there's always that but those are very small things that I for one don't worry about a whole lot but definitely good to be aware um, they make tons of sprays and different kinds of stuff for ticks but I hate spraying any of that crap on myself or you know on my clothes and the laundry and so I just go without basically a trick that I found that works good for me is that I eat a lot of garlic. I put garlic on everything, um, whether it's garlic salt or actual garlic. I think it uh, and it has a natural tick repellent in it myself. I probably only get bit once a year. And 99% of the time, it's wood ticks anyways, and I don't ever seem to have a problem with deer ticks. I know some people, some people get bit two, three, four times a year, and they're all deer ticks, and yeah, Lyme disease isn't a joke, that's for sure. I had a few buddies that have had it, and one couldn't even pull his bow back for the whole year because he lost like all all the muscle in his arm because of the Lyme disease. So and it's not something you should be afraid of, but definitely be aware of it. That's for sure. Ooh, I was talking so long that we found a mushroom. That's uh, a nice looking specimen. We just bombed down the last ridge and nothing to be had on that one just a couple way up high I'm gonna check a couple of these elms coming down off this hillside but this is really really extreme north side <coughs> excuse me <coughs> ah, bug <coughs> oh. Oh. Uh. Yeah, I think we're about done for the day. I know there's lots of daylight left, but my back and legs tell me otherwise. I think we're around 13 miles right now for the day. I don't know, it's five, five o'clock or something, who knows. Um, I'm pretty beat and I gotta get up and do this again tomorrow. So we're gonna make our way off this hill and back down and I'll take a walk along the creek maybe soak my feet for a little bit and we're gonna get back at it tomorrow but so the things you guys should remember 
look up, not down. Know your trees. And, you know, there's a million other little things, but let's go walk. Get outside and go walk. You're going to see so many cool things you've never seen before this time of year. I don't, I mean, I don't see anybody out here. I've been out here twice and it's an incredible place. Like there is an, it's like my own private land and there's so many of those to look up and go find on the internet and they're free. It doesn't cost you a dime. It's public land. Um, get out and use it. Who knows? Maybe you'll find a big old stash of mushrooms like we did today. But uh, I'm pretty excited about that. I'm say we're probably around 11 pounds probably for the day. Oh, that, <laughs> that hurt a little bit. But yeah, it was, a, it was a great day and I hope that you guys learned something. I know not everyone knows a ton about mushrooms and has been running around the woods their whole life. So this can help you guys out a little bit to get out and search and go find a couple then it served its purpose, so.